Galactic explorers, space adventurers, and alien enthusiasts, brace yourselves. You've just plunged into the vast cosmos of Starfield, Bethesda's newest cosmic odyssey. As stars twinkle and planets beckon, you might feel the weightlessness of space, wondering, what should I do first? Worry not, fellow spacefarer, today we'll be bringing you the ultimate Starfield beginner's guide, laying out your first steps in this spacefaring adventure. So buckle up, set your phasers to learn, and let's dive on in. Step one is going to be finishing the Into the Unknown main quest. And so you can see this one actually pops up rather early in the game, basically right after you've made contact with the Constellation people on uh, in New Atlantis. And uh, it'll pop up, it'll just say, talk to Vladimir. This one is probably the first thing you should do. It's not the first thing I did on this playthrough, but it's, you know, it's the smartest first thing to do. Uh, so your first move should be embarking on Into the Unknown, the main quest. Not only is this a pivotal storyline, but it's here that you unlock the game-changing Starborn powers. Think of them as space magic, crucial for combat and research resource gathering. Make this quest your priority to wield the powers of the cosmos early on in the story. The Into the Unknown quest is your initial stepping stone into the Starfield universe. Commencing at the Eye, Jemison, you're tasked with speaking to Vladimir who reveals clues about the two elusive artifacts sprawled across two random planets. Your journey involves jetting off to these planets, discovering the artifacts, and additionally locating and partnering with Andrea, a companion that joins you in the mine. As the narrative unravels, you travel to Prokeon 3, a planet planet boasting mysterious anomalies. Using your hand scanner, you track down distortions that lead you to the Grand Artifact Temple. Inside, players encounter an enigmatic light that, when followed, unlocks a mesmerizing portal. Wrapping up the quest requires returning to the Lodge in New Atlantis, showcasing your newly acquired anti-gravity field starborn power in front of Vladimir, and engaging in a conclusive conversation with him about your findings. This is important because of the starborn powers that you unlock with this quest. So starborn powers, in essence, are the magical abilities granted by ancient artifacts found scattered throughout the cosmos. Similar to arcane spells in classic role-playing games, starborn powers offer a diverse array of combat and exploration skills. Whether you're blasting foes with beams of pure particle energy, channeling the capability to detect life forms around you, or manipulating gravity to your advantage, these powers add depth and versatility to your arsenal. Introduced during the Into the Unknown quest with the unlocking of the anti-gravity field power, these abilities play a pivotal role in your adventure. As you delve deeper into the narrative, subsequent quests present opportunities to discover and harness more of these cosmic powers, transforming you from a mere explorer to a force to be reckoned with in the vastness of space. Number two is going to be another mission that you should do as early as possible, and that is going to be completing the Mantis side quest. So you're going to stumble upon a note from a fallen spacer, and voila, the Mantis quest awaits. While it does occur in a level 30 zone, brave explorers can tackle it earlier if you switch to easier difficulties or if you simply get good. Your reward, a legendary armor set, a formidable weapon, and a brand new spaceship. Talk about an early game boost. The allure of Starfield isn't just the mysteries of space, but also in its highly rewarding side quests, of which the Mantis mission is a shining example to initiate this lucrative side adventure. You must first secure the secret outpost data slate. This elusive item is dropped by spacer enemies during various main and side missions, including Back to Vectera, the Old Neighborhood, and Deputized Side Mission. Once in the possession of this slate, you're pointed towards a hidden opportunity on the moon of Denobula IB. Prepare for an intense battle battle against a brigade of spacers as soon as you land at this secret outpost. Venture deep into the Mantis Lair, confronting enemies and solving the enigmatic Mantis floor puzzle, where spelling the word Tyrannus is your key to survival. All your efforts culminate in a chamber housing the legendary Mantis spacesuit set and the colossal Razorleaf ship. Having navigated the perils of the Mantis Lair, the pinnacle of your rewards is in sight. The Mantis spacesuit set, found in a hexagonal display, offers a superior protective gear upgrade. Though its attributes can vary between playthroughs, however, the true gem of this quest is the Razorleaf ship. With a staggering value of over 120,000 credits, this legendary ship boasts incredible speed and a shielded cargo hold perfect for those covert smuggling runs. With a cargo capacity that can shield contraband, the Razorleaf is an asset for those who dabble in the darker side of space trading. Equipped with advanced weaponry and impressive stats, especially early game, this ship ensures that you're well prepared for any space adventure that lies ahead. Completing the Mantis quest not only reinforces the importance of exploration and puzzle solving in Starfield, but it also rewards players with tools that significantly enhance their galactic adventures. Step number three, unlock essential skills. So you can see from this playthrough that I'm not exactly early in this one, but uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. Before diving deep, unlock some essential skills first before you start really getting into the nitty gritty. Uh, ever dreamt of pickpocketing in space or commandeering enemy ships? Well, select your character background wisely, prioritize the boost pack training skill for enhanced combat and exploration, and the fitness skill to jet across planets swiftly. So these two ones that I recommend to everyone, no matter what play style, 
are the boost pack training, which you can find in the tech skill tree. This one will uh, make it so that your uh, boost pack is, well, A, the first one will allow you to use boost packs. The second one will give you, uh, it'll use up less fuel to do it. Uh, the third one makes it regenerate more quickly, so you'll be able to use it more frequently. And then the fourth one doubles all of those boosts. So it's very useful to level this all the way up if you want to use your boost pack a lot, which you, you really should because it makes mobility in this game a lot easier. Another skill that I recommend to literally every playstyle is the fitness skill. So this one will make it so that your available oxygen is much higher, which is super important if you're planning on moving around quickly anywhere. This one you level up once gives you 10% more, twice gives you 20% more, third gives you 30% more, and then fourth just says sprinting and power attacks now use significantly less oxygen. So using all of these makes you a significantly more agile and mobile person. So those are good for every single playstyle. In the vast unpredictable ex expanse of Starfield, it's crucial for players to hone specific skills early on to ensure both survival and a smoother gaming experience. Prioritizing skills like ship piloting, combat proficiency, and re resource management equips players to navigate the challenges of space travel, confrontations with adversaries, and the intricacies of maintaining a ship. Additionally, as quests and challenges become more demanding, a solid foundation in these core skills means you're better prepared to tackle higher level tasks, explore deeper into the unknown, and maximize the benefits of every mission or encounter. Essentially, by investing in these skills from the outset, you're setting yourself up for success, making your journey through Starfield not only survivable, but truly rewarding. Tip number four is, or step number four, I should say, but it's really more of a tip, is just stock up on digipicks. Pick them up wherever you see them, buy them whenever you get them. It's very useful to make sure you're never running out of these bad boys. Digipicks are the space locksmith's dream. Picking locks is a handy skill on many a planet, so ensure that you're always equipped. Purchase them, find them on the Fallen, and upgrade your security skill to tackle even the trickiest of locks. Uh, in Starfield, the digipick is indispensable for unlocking valuable treasures from safes to computers. While obtaining them is crucial, using them carelessly might lead to a tarnished reputation or even arrests. You can find digipicks in abandoned outposts, often guarded by pirates, or buy them from trade authority vendors, albeit at a higher cost. For a steady supply, aligning with the Ryujin Industries faction is invaluable. Their missions frequently reward digipicks and can be repeated to, for a net gain. Always keep a healthy stash to ensure that no locked prize remains unreachable. You never want to be looting some high-level outpost uh, only to find that you are out of digipicks. So make sure you keep yourself stocked on that. Step number five is join a faction. So you can see in this playthrough, the only faction I've gone all the way through is the uh, Crimson Fleet faction. You can join all of them as far as I know. None of them, like, uh, isolate you from choosing other ones. But you should choose at least one early on. Uh, Crimson Fleet is probably my main recommendation, but all of them are definitely good options. You should join one as as early as possible once you've done the other steps that I've already talked about in this video. So factions aren't just uh, for the galactic political enthusiasts, joining groups like the Crimson Fleet not only get you some sweet credits, but also reward you with legendary weapons, so choose your allies wisely. In the expansive universe of Starfield, your alliance with a faction can profoundly influence your journey. Beyond the main story's Constellation faction, there are at least three factions that you should join relatively early. The United Colonies provides a straightforward path, making it ideal for those seeking a more linear and morally upright existence. This faction is a beacon of order amidst the chaos and space, offering a more structured experience. On the other hand, Ryujin Industries immerses players in the world of mega corporations where persuasion holds more weight than combat. This dazzling city of lights ensures an entry regardless of your interview responses, promising a mix of glamour and ease. For those with a penchant for the renegade path, the Crimson Fleet awaits. As space pirates, they promise immense wealth and diverse combat missions. However, their notorious reputation means players will trade honor for riches and adventure. An important thing to note about them is that joining the Crimson Fleet is a great way to make money as they make a very convenient place to sell your smuggled and stolen goods. So, uh, joining a faction nice and early is what something I definitely recommend as it's going to help you get a bunch of XP, money, legendary weapons, and equipment. It's definitely something you're going to want to do early game. Number six, or step six, get a ship upgrade. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and spend a million credits customizing your perfect class C ship. For one thing, you can't even pilot a class C ship until you've leveled up your piloting skill enough. Uh, but you should make sure that you're flying as good as possible, basically. And so you can do this primarily just with upgrades. Uh, so taking your existing ship and just upgrading the components that are available for that specific system. Your starter ship is like a bicycle of the cosmos. It's time for an upgrade. With space pirates and interstellar anomalies at every turn, a beefier ship means better defense and more crew members. In Starfield, 
battlefield players have the opportunity to deeply personalize their spaceships, making modifications and upgrades integral to enhancing gameplay. At the heart of these customizations is the interaction with ship service technicians. By engaging with these NPCs, which can be found on most settled systems, players can access both the upgrade and ship builder screens, each offering distinct possibilities. The former presents a streamlined approach with users able to modify the ship's engines, shields, grav drives, reactor, and weapon systems. These are the most important parts of upgrading your ship to make it more survivable in combat. Although, it, when doing this, you are confined to selecting variants from the same manufacturer. The ship builder screen, on the other hand, grants a more in-depth customization experience. Here, players can mix and match various modules like cockpits, habs, landing bays, gears, dockers, fuel tanks, and structural components. However, customization comes with constraints. Ships have limitations on size, reactor class, and module alignment, among others. Any deviations may lead to errors such as misaligned parts, overextended ship length, or power imbalances, emphasizing the need for careful planning and strategic choices. Step 7. Embrace Planetary Exploration Satiate your inner explorer by hopping from one star system to another. Scan planets for XP, which translates to faster skill accumulation. Plus, you never know which celestial body hides intriguing points of interest. In Starfield, the act of exploring space and scanning planets is a gold mine of gameplay benefits. Venturing into the unknown landscapes of celestial bodies unlocks unique opportunities to gather valuable resources from essential minerals to rare alien artifacts, all of which can be pivotal for ship upgrades, crafting, or trading. Beyond the tangible loot, these exploratory endeavors lead players to hidden outposts or crash sites, offering a wealth of side quests and encounters. Engaging with these challenges not only rewards players with currency, but also provides crucial combat experience, accelerating character progression and leveling up. In essence, exploration is both an enriching journey and a strategic gameplay enhancer, so I definitely recommend doing this uh, early in the game, for one thing just to familiarize yourself with the system, but for another, all of that other benefit type stuff that I already talked about. And there you have it, brave cosmonauts. The universe of Starfield is vast, teeming with opportunities, mysteries, and a hint of danger. But with these seven steps, you're now primed to make the most of your early days amongst the stars. Remember, space isn't just about exploration, it's about strategy, making the right moves and forging your destiny. Now fuel up your engines, set your sights on the horizons, and may the stars guide you on this grand adventure. Until next time, spacefarers. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.